Hello, I'm Atuba George and I'm so blessed to be bringing God's truth to you today. Praise God. Before going to today's broadcast, can we make demand for our daily bread? Are you ready? Say with me, Father, I demand now and I receive my daily bread. It's coming. It's coming now in Jesus' name. Amen. Praise God. I wanted to read a scripture to you yesterday. Let's just go there. Matthew chapter 24. You see, I was telling you yesterday, don't let anybody derail you. The end of all things is at hand. The end of all things is at hand. Hmm. Matthew chapter 24. Please look at this. Jesus was speaking. Let me start from verse 1. I'll take it all the way to verse 13 or 14. Then Jesus went out and departed from the temple, and his disciples came up to show him the building of the temple and jesus said to them do you not see all these things assuredly i say to you not one stone shall be left here upon another that shall not be thrown down and this is a very strong statement jesus made and if you understand if you understand the way god speaks you will be troubled by how jesus spoke these words and how he ended it. See, when a prophet speaks and what he says is bad, and in that prophecy, he doesn't give a chance of redemption, that's troubling. I'll say it again. When a prophet speaks, here, what we just read was a prophecy Jesus was prophesying. So he was functioning as a prophet when he spoke to the disciples. See, he was looking at the future that he was telling them what will be. So I said, when a prophet speaks a thing that is not good and does not in that prophecy give um, a window of redemption where that prophecy is concerned, then that's not a good prophecy indeed. Now, look at what Jesus said here. Now, they came to show him this temple, so the physical temple, of course. And he said, do you not see all... Jesus now said to them, do you not see all these things? Now, I mean, Jesus, see how beautiful and magnificent this temple is. And Jesus was looking at them and said, can't you see? See what? The beauty of the temple? No, Jesus said, can't you see? <laughs> Assuredly, meaning truly, truly, I say to you, not one stone shall be left here upon another that shall not be thrown down. And he stopped. Jesus just confirmed that this temple is going to be destroyed and it's never going to be built again. Because he could have said, not one stone shall be left on another that shall not be thrown down. But I tell you the truth, at the end, it shall stand. He, he could have given that room or window for redemption, but he didn't. He just said it. And more like close the book. Now, I went before the Lord concerning this some years back. Because when I read this, I was troubled. Like, Lord, how would you just make a statement like that? Are you angry at Solomon? And the Lord said this to me. He said, the temple was never in my plan. The temple was never in his plan. 
I said, but then why did you give them the permission to build it? David requested for the temple. Now, some of you don't realize this. When David requested for the temple, God says, no, don't build it. Now, the assumption is that because David's hands are stained with blood, so that's why God didn't want him. No, David was already doing well with God. Can you understand this now? David was already doing well with God. God didn't want David to put his hands to work and iniquity. What do I mean by that? Because there was no temple in the plan of God. Please listen to what I'm sharing with you. Because there was no temple in the plan of God. So when David came up with the idea, wonderful idea, but God says, no, don't build it. Leave it. God permitted the temple to be built, even though it was not in his plan. But then God said to David, you don't build it. So he left it and of course he finished his work. He got everything prepared and instructed his son Solomon and told him, look, I wanted to do this thing, but God said, I should not do it. So maybe you should try to do it. And you know the story, Solomon paid priority to the building of that temple. And he finished building it. And God visited him because of that temple. Now, these are the things that are confusing to a lot of people. Uh, the temple was not God's plan. But how come God joined in the celebration? Yeah, it was a good initiative from a man. But then it was not in his plan. See, there are many good things we do that will be destroyed simply because they are not in the plan. They look wonderful. Even God will look at it and say, wow. But a season will come. He will not say, oh, this thing was wow when they built it. Too. Let's just leave it. No, it will be taken down. It has served its purpose. It made all of you happy, right? Yes, okay, it's served this purpose, so take it down. And that's what's going to happen to a lot of projects that we aim back on that are not in the plan of God. A lot of things we have lived, we have done, we wish to do that are not in God's plan. See, so Jesus said, not one stone has a very deep statement not one stone that shall not be thrown not one stone shall be left or here upon another so two stones are from this temple they will not find the two of them together every pieces will be cutted away as in completely destroyed what a statement And that's exactly what has happened. The temple was completely destroyed. Like I said, simply because there was no plan for it. So the temple lasted, but then because there's no plan for it, it can't last forever. See, let's go on. Now, as he sat on the Mount of Olives, the disciples came to him privately, saying, Tell us, because he just threw one bomb at them. <laughs> it's good. He said, Tell us, when will these things be? And what will be the sign of your coming and of the end of the age? Take note of these questions they asked him. When will these things be? Which things? He just told them that this temple, one stone will not be left on another. 
And so they're like, okay, Lord. They said they came privately. So now this is the time they come to him and he explains every parable to them that he shared in the public. So he said, tell us. Tell us what? When will these things be? Number one. And what will be the sign of your coming? And what will be the sign of the end of the age? These three things they asked Jesus. And Jesus is going to spend the next two chapters explaining them. Now, Matthew was a present witness. So there is a likelihood he wasn't writing what he was told. He's writing what he heard from the mouth of Jesus. And he understood from what Jesus shared. We may all hear the same thing, but our understanding might be different. And two, our focus might be different. See? So Jesus answered verse 4, and said to them, Take heed that no one deceives you. That's the first thing he said. Don't let anyone deceive you. Meaning, there are people that are going to attempt to deceive you. So they asked him, when will this thing be? And the first thing he's saying to them is, be careful not to be deceived. Why? For many will come in my name saying, I am the Christ and will deceive many. See, now when you see people being deceived by, by false prophets, false teachers, when you see all those multitude of people being deceived, it's not strange. So I wonder what kind of brain people have. You know, that's how we say. How, how, can, you, how, how can you listen to this and, and think it's okay? Jesus said it. He said, many will come in my name saying, I am the Christ and will deceive many. And you will hear of wars and rumors of wars. See that you are not troubled. For all these things must come to pass, but the end is not yet. For nations will rise against nations and kingdoms against kingdoms. And there shall be famine, pestilence, and earthquakes in various places. All these are the beginning of sorrows. Then they will deliver you up to tribulation and kill you. And you will be hated by all nations for my name's sake. Now, let me explain something here. Notice it says, then they will deliver you up to tribulation and kill you. And you will be hated by all nations for my name's sake. Now, Jesus, Matthew writing this, I said, when, 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 we, when they all listened to Jesus, they heard what he said, but their understanding was, couldn't have been the same. So Matthew would say something. Luke, John would say something from the same statement, but the understanding is, is not the same. Because many people look at this, after all, Jesus said they will kill you. So when, when you see them take um, believers and cut off their heads in, in, in some gruesome manner. For example, most of the early apostles, the way they died. Now people have used that to preach um, um, endurance and, you know, tell us, do you know how how many blood was shed for this gospel to get to us. See, the truth is, your blood was not needed, is not needed, will never be needed. Their blood was not needed also. See, that's at one day, I trust the Holy Spirit will delve deep into that. Jesus, I come in a praikaskia. Mm. 
follow it for context and, and you will understand what Jesus is saying. Let me, let me not enter that for now. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Now, verse 10. Because of all these things happening, he said, and then many will be offended and will betray one another and will hate one another. Because there's going to be so much trouble because of the gospel. He said many will be offended. Why will they be offended? A lot of questions will begin to arise in their hearts. Now, this many is not the babies. Many preachers will be offended. Many old believers will be offended. You see, okay, they, they, they arrested a, a, a disciple of Jesus Christ and we were praying and then they ended up killing that disciple of Jesus Christ. Then the question arises, why didn't Jesus save him? Why did Jesus let him die? Why didn't he save him? I don't know. See, I don't know. Is Jesus a savior? Yes, he is. So why didn't he save him? I don't know. Herod arrested John. Sorry, Herod arrested James. And killed him. When he killed him, the Jews were excited. Thunder did not strike. Herod did not die suddenly. It was his personal vendetta on the church. So he was carrying out his vendetta on the church. And his plan was to destroy all of them. So he, he took James, killed him. Nothing happened. Then he took Peter and locked him up. Planning that he was going to kill him also. And the Bible said the church prayed. The question, is it that the church did not pray when James was arrested until he was killed? And then we look at the story. Peter was arrested and locked up in prison. And the church was praying non-stop, which was a good thing. And an angel appeared to Peter in the prison, and Peter was sleeping. The church was praying, Peter was sleeping. And the angel came and arrested him and, and freed him, took him out of that prison. Now, we read in scripture severally, the disciples will be arrested and locked up in prison. And an angel will show up in that prison and release them and say, go. Go preach to the people all the words of this life. We read about Paul and Silas. We read about Paul and Barnabas when they were stoned and, and kept out to die. How God revived them. We see all those victories, okay? And then we see the ones that were killed and it looked like there was no help for them. Is it truly that there was no help for them? Or they rejected the help? I'll tell you this for free. The Lord said this to me. You remember when Stephen was stoned, okay? And just before they started stoning him, he, he said something. He said, I see the Lord stand. I see Jesus standing at the right hand of the Lord. And now many people have interpreted this severally. That Jesus had to stand up to receive the first matter of the church. That troubled me. Now I, I heard that growing up. Okay. But that troubled me for a while. Like, I don't get it. How, how would Jesus stand to receive the first matter of the church? Are we that vulnerable? Are we that helpless that he's, he cannot save in situations like that? 
Like I said, that troubled me for many years until I went before the Lord. And I, and I began to talk to the Lord about it. I said, Lord, this doesn't look right. And what did the Lord tell me? I'll tell you tomorrow because my time is up. <laughs> it's God. Oh, thank you, Lord Jesus. You see, in these last days, it is truth that will make us free. Not emotions, but truth. And I'm committed that I will not hold back any truth from you. And so help me, God. Praise God. I'll see you tomorrow. God bless you. Bye.